One of the most exciting parts about Dead Cells is finding a high-powered weapon that you can use in any build you want. These are what we call Legendaries items. They are colorless items, so they take on the power of whatever your highest scroll count is. And in Dead Cells, each Legendary item has a unique affix on it that you most likely won't find anywhere else. These make them extremely powerful, and being able to make a build around it is monumental in making a successful build that can win a game in Dead Cells. Today we're going to do a tier list on all the legendaries as of update 35. Many of these have been updated, so if you saw my old video on top legendaries in Dead Cells, a lot of these have been changed. I should also mention there are 189 legendaries we're going to look at right now. So we're going to blast through each one and give you a quick rating and move on to the next. I'll have timestamps in the video that are alphabetical, so you'll be able to go to a specific section to see a weapon that you like. As per usual, this list is purely subjective. In my opinion, you should try every legendary out at least one time to get a feel on how good it is. But either way, without further ado, let's kick things off with a high-speed weapon known as Abyssal Trident. Trident gives you bonus run speed on crit. It almost looks like it's a huge boost that's different than your normal run speed. We're going to put this in the C tier, however, because run speed only does so much in Dead Cells. I love to see later on that run speed gives you some kind of benefits besides speed running. Alchemic Carbine gives you double stacks on the poison. This is in the B tier because, funny enough, the poison double stack is only on the initial bullet. The Poison Cloud that Carbine does, does not double. So while it's not bad, it's not anything super extraordinary. Alucard's Shield is also combined with Alucard's Sword because they have the same legendary affix. When one is picked up, the other one is picked up automatically. This is cool because they're part of a set and also changes their moveset when you use them together. I'm going to put this in the S tier. I think this is the only legendary that functions this way. And even though I don't try to utilize the new combo, it is actually really cool if you do. Anathema, one of the brand new weapons in Update 35. This gives you a global shield on use, but we're going to put it in the D tier. So unfortunately, Anathema curses you whenever you hit an enemy. The global shield is not even a band-aid solution to protect you from death. If you try to utilize the shield, you will probably die. So I would recommend not even bothering. Assassin's Dagger, bonus damage from critical hits. Of course, Assassin's Dagger, you always want to crit with it anyway, so we're going to put this in the A tier. Basically making the weapon even better than it already is. Assault Shield is another new one. This guy added a hold to attack. When you charge the shield, it now gives you bonus distance. If you're speed running, it actually sends you very far. We're going to put it in the C for situational tier. If you're speed running, it's great. If you're not speed running, it's basically the same as a regular assault shield. Balance Blade gives you run speed on crit. I think the idea here is that once you start critting, of course, you want to maintain that for the entire run. So that speed bonus is going to help you get to the next monster. Uh, we're going to put this in the C tier because that doesn't really do anything for bosses. Some biomes, the maps are just too big to maintain the combo anyway. Barnacle gives you poison bullet. What that means is that the bullet actually causes a poison cloud to appear. This is in the S tier because that gives Barnacle self-reliance and does not need a poison weapon in your arsenal. But we actually have a tier that is even higher than S, and that's where Barrel Launcher comes in. The new Barrel Launcher has Triple Shot, which fires out three barrels. These do detonate on each other, so you get this massive shotgun effect on whatever's in front of you. This is in the double S tier. It is extremely strong. However, keep in mind that you will no longer get the bounce mechanic because they do detonate off each other. Next up, we have Barricade. This is part of the diverse deck. The legendary version of Barricade gives you the blue health indefinitely on parries. It's actually pretty cool. Barricade itself isn't my go-to card whenever I have the chance, so this is going to be in the B tier. Baseball Bat, an extremely popular weapon in Dead Cells. The legendary has something that doesn't exist anywhere else, and that's Stun on Kill. It actually stuns enemies above and below you, so we're going to put this in the A tier. It's very likely that you use some kind of stun anyway, so the next monster to be stunned by the legendary 
probably got stunned by stun grenade or rooted by root grenade. Bat volley is in the B tier. B for bat. This thing actually ricochets the bats on walls. It's really, really cool. It doesn't actually solve the issue of the bats, which is whenever I press the button, I'm locked in place. I wonder if Global Shield could have been better on this. The Bible is another weapon from the Castlevania DLC. This one is going in the S tier. You get double the Bibles whenever you cast them. Two Bibles turn into four Bibles. I would say if you find the Bible, definitely give it a try. Bladed Tomfa has an upgraded legendary. It only ever does the first attack. Now, in my defense, when I use it, it's actually extremely fun. But would I recommend it to everyone? Probably not. So this is going to be in the C tier for situational. This is probably best used if you have a second weapon equipped. Bloodsword, double stacks, double pogs. I don't think I actually like this effect on Bloodsword. I would have maybe preferred bleeding causes poisoning or uncapped amount of bleeding on the enemy. I think when you pop the bleed with Bloodsword and have to start from zero, it actually lowers the DPS from Bloodsword a bit. However, if you stack this with some other bleed source, it's actually really strong. So I'm going to have this in the B tier for now. Bloodthirsty Shield also gets double stacks. This is in the C tier, however, because even though double stacks is really nice, keep in mind one parry is one bleed. So all it is is two bleed. Not very strong. Blowgun. This now has Poison Cloud on hit. I actually think this is very strong, so we're going to have this in the S tier. Blowgun has the issue of not killing enemies in the front, but Poison Cloud lets you do that. And a little bonus tip, if you combine this with networking, you'll be able to kill enemies much, much easier. The Bone from Skull of the Hero Slayer has a new effect. When killing an enemy, your spin actually continues. It's really, really cool, but we're only going to put this in the A tier because you cannot jump and go to another platform with it. And dodge rolling, of course, cancels the roll. Boomerang, double S tier. This has plus one ammo on it. Back in the day, Boomerang could get ammo mutation, and I think that's actually coming back. If so, you can use three Boomerangs with the Legendary version, plus a second Boomerang in your offhand to make for five Boomerangs total. Bow and Endless Quiver. This has brand new technology, infinite stacking damage. Don't forget, Bow and Endless Quiver has infinite ammo, so as long as you can land hits, you're getting bonus damage, scales indefinitely. This is in the S tier, not double S, only because I'm not a fan of Bow and Endless Quiver anyway. Broadsword gets Global Shield on kill. This solves a lot of the issues with Broadsword, where you hit one enemy and maybe there's a bat above you. You will be shielded if you kill that melee monster and you won't die to the bat. This is in the A tier, doesn't help you on bosses, but really good in biomes. Catalyst. The next part of Diverse Deck, when you activate Catalyst, the monster that's poison will detonate the poison. And with the legendary version of Catalyst, the detonated poison does not go away. You only ever see this one time realistically, but that one time is extremely fun. I'm going to put this in the A tier. Try using this with Snake Fang. Cleaver gets double stack. We're putting this in the A tier because unlike Bloodsword, all I have to do is lay down the cleaver and it does its job. The cleaver itself is grinding up the monster alongside the bleed procs. Don't forget, you can use this on some monsters like the giant, even though it looks like they're flying, they will take damage from cleaver on the ground. Cluster grenade gets echo. This causes a second explosion to activate after the first. I rarely use cluster grenade, but if I find legendary version, I'm probably picking it up. This is in the S tier. Cocoon is a really weird one. Every time you do a parry with Cocoon, the entire thing gets reset, so you can do another parry. The legendary version keeps track of how many parries you did, and if you finally miss one, it will actually give you some credit back by reducing the cooldown from your successful parries. I know that's a little wordy. It's in the B tier. It's probably the same thing as a normal Cocoon, but with this little extra failsafe just in case. The Syringe, which is a 5 BC weapon, this gives you run speed on kill, which is probably unnecessary. So the run speed, I think, is redundant. I'm going to put this in the D tier. It's not awful, but I don't think I need that. Gross of Cloud, another double stacker. 
cloud on normal biome monsters with things like spread oil around you is very strong because all of that has double stacks. However, on bosses, I still find it to be inconsistent, so I'm going to put this in the C tier. If Corrosive Cloud ever gets a damage tick buff, I'll definitely bump this up. Corrupted Power Global Shield on use. You would think that that would be awesome because Corrupted Power causes you to take additional damage. However, the Global Shield lasts for less than a second and it's only on the initial activation. The chance of you getting a block off this is near zero. So we're going to put this in the F tier, the first one of this list. Opposite of that, we have the cross in the double S tier. This might be one of the best legendaries in the game, especially if you pair this with ammo mutation. You get to spam three crosses instantly. It will usually delete any monster it touches. The only thing keeping it from triple S is that you have to catch them to recast them. Crowbar does additional damage behind the monster. Crowbar is already pretty strong, and the only thing keeping it from being stronger is needing a door to break. This is like a little bit of a catch-up mechanic, especially on bosses. You get the chance to do bonus damage if the boss has a back to it. So we're going to have this in the B tier. Crusher. When the Crusher is done, the monster will be frozen. If you're running Heart of Ice, you might have enough time to toss down the Crusher again. It's kind of a cool idea. I'm going to have it in the D tier because I think there's other things this could have been. And I don't know if I actually need the freeze if I'm running Heart of Ice anyway. Cudgel gets long stun. This you can find as a starter fix on the normal Cudgel. But this makes it so you don't have to re-roll it. We're going to put this in the A tier. This just turns Cudgel into better Cudgel. Curse Sword. If you see my video on this is the best legendary in the game, no cap, you would know that this thing's already in the triple S tier. I admit if you did die, it probably goes in the F tier, but if you manage to play around that, this is definitely the strongest weapon in the game. Dagger of Profit now has bonus money if you kill the monster with the last hit of the combo. A lot of words there, all of which are bad. This is in the D tier. Unfortunately, you have to time the last hit of the combo to kill the enemy just to get the money from it. And even then, the money is tied to get rich quick mutation for some reason. You have to wait until your move speed bonus is done in order to get the money. Death Orb has double speed. This isn't bad. And on monsters like Dracula and the Giant, it's actually pretty impactful. I'm going to have this in the B tier. I think there's other legendaries I would rather have over this, but Death Scythe, the next legendary from Castlevania DLC. This one causes the ghosts that kill monsters to summon new ghosts. I actually think this is one of the top five legendaries in the game. Triple S tier. This will absolutely destroy every biome in the game. And if you play it right, it will actually do very good damage on bosses even though you don't get the benefit of the ghosts. Double Crossbow-Matic. This gets super pierce. It will pierce through every monster that it comes across. That's kind of what Double Crossbow-Matic wants to do anyway. But chances are you already had pierce one enemy, and I don't know if pierce all is really necessary. So we're going to put this in the B tier. Electric Whip. Another back damage weapon. I've tried to test out how it works with the electricity. I do think it does bonus damage with electricity if you added it behind the monster. It's really weird. I'm going to put this in the A tier because I think it's probably working and probably strong. Speaking of electricity, we have Electrodynamics. This is another part of Diverse Deck, except this one is in the S tier. Every time you use an ability, you get up to five orbs that rotate around you and actually destroy monsters all by themselves. Honestly, this could have been double S. The only thing is you don't get orbs on every single skill in the game. Opposite of S tier, we have the F tier for Emergency Door. The Emergency Door is unbreakable from everything except for bosses. I think bosses are the only thing I would want it to be unbreakable from, but I guess we needed balance. But unfortunately, in 4BC+, Plus, the monsters teleport. So even with an unbreakable door, enemies like the bird will just jump around it, and enemies like Failed Experiment just teleport to you anyway. Explosive Crossbow has a melee component. If it kills an enemy, the enemies freeze. 
this is pretty cool, but if you have explosive crossbow melee, it bumps enemies backward. I'm gonna put this in the C tier. There's probably an instance where the freeze saved you, but chances are the bump back would have saved you anyway. The other part of explosive crossbow is its rocket component. This will pierce enemies. This is in the S tier. Borderline double S because the pierce will actually hit enemies twice if they're stacked on each other. Explosive decoy. If you miss the explosion, the entire cooldown is reset. Honestly, this should probably just be on explosive decoy by default. I'm going to put this in the F tier. Technically saying I'd rather not use decoy at all. Face flask. You get 70% of your missing HP as blue HP. This only lasts for 2 seconds, so I wouldn't count on this to save your life. I'm going to put this in the B tier. If it lasted any longer, it would definitely be higher than that. Furry Man's Lantern. The melee component does fire on hit. I don't know if this interferes with your soul catching mechanic, but if you have extra damage to burning target, it will be a lot easier to kill stuff. Though I don't know if I need help killing a monster with the melee attack, so I'm going to put this in the C tier. Soul Shot gets Fire Bullet. This allows me to kill monsters that maybe I couldn't in a single shot, such as a slasher. This is going to be in the B tier. Not extremely better than the, the melee component, but I can probably imagine this saving you by having the fire across the ground. Fire Blast has global shield on use. We have been rating that pretty low for other things, but on Fire Blast, it's not that bad. It comes out on the initial cast. You can also time it to block an attack though this is very dangerous gameplay. I'm going to put this in the C tier. Fire Grenade has a bigger explosion. It's super noticeable. We're going to put this in the A tier. There's a really high chance you will kill every monster on your screen so long as the fire can penetrate that platform. Fire Brand has double stack. Remember, we've been rating double stack pretty low too, but Fire Brand is actually going to be in the S tier. You can see the difference between a normal shot and a legendary shot. This spinny guy actually dies so much faster from one firebrand than it does on a normal one. Flame turret also gets double stack. I have a feeling that burning oil and even the poison cloud from the flamethrower gets double stack, which is very strong. We're also going to have this in the S tier. Flashing fans bleed on hit. I don't know why. Might be a Mortal Kombat reference. This is in the B tier. It's not nothing because you get the chance of self synergy, but it's not anything spectacular compared to some of the other legendaries out there. Flawless, if you get hit, you lose the chance to do a critical hit. However, with the legendary version, if you kill the monster within one second, you get your crits back. It's a little situational, but it does actually work fairly well. We're gonna put this in the B tier only because you can't reset your crits on bosses. Speaking of crits, we have Flint. This thing crits 100% of the time. Also activates the fire across the ground on just a normal press of the button. This is in the triple S tier. One of the best legendaries in the game. If you see this, you absolutely have to run it. Force Shield is in the D tier. This one is a little tough. It just gives you ice on parry. I don't think that actually does anything for a Force Shield player, so this is going to be in the D tier. Foresight, yet another of our diverse deck skills. This is simply better Foresight. All the numbers that it counts towards are reduced. Chances are you're going to be in Electrodynamics anyway, so we're going to put this in the B tier. Frantic Sword allows you to heal up to 50% of your max life. That's exactly what Frantic Sword wants, so we're going to put this in the A tier. It's only not S because half life is still pretty dangerous. Frontline Shield gives you bonus damage on the next melee attack after a parry. That you can get on the normal one, but we're going to put this in the A tier because this is what you always want on Frontline Shield anyway. Frost Blast gives you stronger ice. I know it says that enemies are frozen for longer, but what I think that means on everything with strong ice is that the monster won't break out of the ice as easily. I'm just going to put this in the B tier. I'm sure it works, but I think it's kind of inconsistent. Giant Comb. This comes from the Clean Cut update. You get critical attacks from just jumping. This is going to be in the S tier. You get crits on basically every monster in the game this way. Not double S or triple S, however, because I do think there are things stronger than this.
Giant Killer gets ramping damage. Every time you land the third hit of the combo, your entire kit gets increased. This is in the S tier, not double because it is a Giant Killer and the combo is kind of weird anyway. Giant Whistle, Echo, once again, anything with Echo, very, very cool. This is in the S tier. If one whistle won't kill the monster, I'm pretty sure two will. Gilded Yumi gets Fire Bullet. This is okay, so it's in the B tier. Every monster you hit with Gilded Yumi gets knocked back anyway, so I think there's a chance it won't be set on fire. But if it somehow lives from that, it will walk onto fire and die. Gold Digger has a new thing where its crit multiplier is increased based off of your gold. Kinda similar to Greed Shield, but not exactly. You won't notice the bonus damage from the 12,000 required, but once you get into the high numbers, it's extremely noticeable. Grapple Hook throws out a grapple behind you. This used to be OP, and I mean like triple S tier OP. But right now, we're gonna keep it in the A tier. It's just really fun to be able to hook an enemy in front of you and maybe get something that's behind you. The Great Owl has Pierce All. I think if you take Owl, you're probably getting Pierce One anyway, so this is a little redundant. This is in the B tier. It probably could be stronger, but hey, I'll take a Pierce, sure. Greed Shield, another vid that we have up on YouTube. This one is in the triple S tier. The amount of damage that money can get you with Greed Shield is ridiculous. So definitely give this a try if you're a fan of doing parries. Hand Hook, Bleed on Hit. The chance of self-synergy put this in the B tier alone. It doesn't really help out Hand Hook's initial gameplay though. Hard Light Gun can apply double the stacks on enemies. Every single bullet counts as essentially two bullets. This is in the A tier because that is literally what Hard Light Gun wants to do. And you combine that with the sword, which is also in the A tier. Bonus critical damage. The combo is still kind of difficult to use in general, but I'd say definitely give the legendary version a try. Atori's Katana gets Deflect. Yet another vid we have on YouTube. I'll link it in the description. Even though it's a super cool video, the actual legendary itself is probably D tier. Hayabusa Boots gets a knockback bonus on the Somersault. This thing is actually very potent. We're gonna put this in the A tier. I don't know if it helps you on bosses, but in biomes, you can clear whole rooms by just doing the backflip. The other Hayabusa weapon gets you Explosion on Kill. This might be a reference to anime or something, but this is only going to be in the B tier. While it's a very cool legendary, I highly doubt you're getting a noticeable explosion that would hit another monster. Heavy Crossbow, the reload component actually has Global Shield. It's really snazzy when you can use this to block an enemy, but I wouldn't recommend doing that on purpose. However, B tier because it will probably save your life at some point. The actual shot from Heavy Crossbow gets Super Pierce. The Pierce All mechanic is highly necessary on this because if you don't kill something behind the first monster, you might get hit. We're gonna have this one in the A tier. Another Pierce All weapon, the Heavy Turret. Once again, I'm probably going for Pierce 1 anyway, so this is just icing on the cake. We're gonna put this in the B tier because it's just kind of doing what it's gonna do already. Hemorrhage gets bleed propagation. This does help you land the crit on the next monster behind the first one. It's not nothing, so it's gonna be in the B tier. Doesn't really help you on bosses at all. Hokuto's bow gets pierce all. Remember Hokuto's bow got nerfed, so the radius of the effect is actually reduced. I think the pierce all does help with that. So this is gonna be in the A tier to counteract the nerfs. Holy Water. This is a shout out to the actual Castlevania weapon for Holy Water. This is in the S tier. It's extremely cool. It actually has a global shield when you use it. Only reason why it's not in the triple S is because there's things probably stronger than this. Speaking of which, a triple S rank ice armor is extremely good to use. This thing never loses the ice armor unless you get hit. This is one of the ultimate weapons in terms of safety, so I would recommend using this almost every single time you see it. Ice Bow is kind of a weird one. I'm not exactly sure where this is gonna be used, and having it in Acrobatic Pack, I don't think is gonna work out as well as having almost any other ranged weapon in the backpack. 
I'm gonna put this in the C tier. If you can figure out how to make this good, definitely let me know in the comments. Ice Crossbow, the piercing shot gets Death Freeze. What this does is almost turns it into a self-sufficient weapon so long as two enemies are stacked on each other. If you're lucky enough to kill one, it will freeze the other and that will do critical damage on that one. Pretty cool stuff. We're gonna give this an A rank. The regular Ice Crossbow shot is again the strong ice monsters don't break out as easily however i highly doubt you'll change your gameplay and you'll do the standard normal shot into pierce shot into normal into pierce so i'm gonna give this a b rank ice grenade yet another strong ice item this is in the b tier i think it's a little more useful than ice bow for things like the scythe ice shards actually was changed this now bounces on the ground um, I think it bounces maybe a total of three times total, which is actually pretty nice. I don't know if it's game winning by itself, so we're going to give it a B tier. This one probably works best with Oil Grenade. Next, Ice Shield. Again, strong ice. Probably good in the backpack, but I think B tier is perfectly fine. It's not game breaking. Impaler now does bonus damage behind the enemy. We're going to put this in the A tier. This solves the issue of bosses that you cannot push into a wall. However, keep in mind that a lot of bosses don't have backs to them. So try to pick ones that you will get the bonus damage on. Indulgence, a new weapon. The legendary version of this causes the skill to repeat itself if it kills a target. This isn't quite as strong as Spell Echo that we got on things like the Giant Whistle. And it really will only work on the critical hit as the non-crit doesn't do a lot of damage. I have this in the B tier. If you have enough damage to make the crit kill, it's actually super exciting, but chances are you probably won't. Infantry Bow gets bleed on hit. This does allow for self-synergy if you have a bow that does bonus damage to bleeding target. However, you will probably never get five stacks of bleed from this thing because the attack speed's too slow. We're gonna put this in the C tier. Infantry Grenade gets oil on hit. This is kind of weird. I'm going to assume that there's some kind of cool setup utilizing this and maybe pyrotechnics. However, oil grenade already exists. I'm going to put this in the C tier. Again, if you can find a cool setup with this, definitely let me know. Iron Staff freezes the enemy on parry. This is in the B tier. It's actually really good because it gives you the chance to do the full hit of your combo on something like Hand of the King. However, in biomes, if I do the parry, the monsters probably gonna die anyway so if anything it's just a little bit of a fail safe but it's not like super safe killing deck this one is extremely unique every card that you throw out has a chance to do a status effect and we're not talking just poison and burn there's root there's freeze even networking shows up for some reason it's almost like anything that can pop on an enemy's head will pop up I'm going to put this in the S tier. King Scepter gives you invulnerability on the spin. What that is, is when you hit an enemy normally, you'll bounce into the air. While spinning, you are invulnerable, but only while spinning. This is in the C tier. I couldn't find a lot of monsters to replicate the invulnerability on. So I highly doubt you'll actually see this in action. With Knife Dance, bleeding causes poisoning. This is probably one of the strongest affixes in the game. Any source of bleed will also do poison. All you have to do is apply the Knife Dance one time and then something like Cleaver or Blood Sword will continue doing poison even while the Knife Dance's bleed is gone away. This is in the S tier. I could probably bump it up higher but I think S is perfectly fine. Knockback Shield knocks the enemies back even farther. This is enough to kill a lot of stuff or knock it off a platform. We're gonna put this in the B tier because you can kinda do that already with a normal knockback. Just makes it a lot easier to do so. Lazaring Aura has bleed on hit. I don't think it attacks fast enough to do five stacks of bleeding. So we're gonna put this in the A tier. It's still very nice and gives you some self-synergy options. Laser Glaive gets plus one ammo. You already know I'm a really big fan of plus one ammo. Laser Glaive by itself doesn't really kill bosses and plus one ammo doesn't help with that. So we're gonna give this one an A tier. Leg Hugger has been changed. You now get double the Leg Huggers whenever you activate this skill. Those two Leg Huggers actually work together and take less time to Digivolve than a regular leg hugger by itself. 
this is in the S tier. If you happen to get more leg huggers, it's probably triple S. But by itself, very good item. Lightning Bolt, Global Shield on Kill. You may think to yourself, V, the whole point of the Lightning Bolt is that you hurt yourself if you hold it down for too long and that helps. I am here to tell you it does not protect you against the self damage. This is in the F tier. I don't think the Global Shield's ever going to help you and the whole point is to protect you from self damage and it fails to do that. Lightning Rods. This thing has two charges. That means you can simply lay down a row of lightning rods and then lay down another row right afterward. It's actually really cool. This is in the A tier only because I think there's things that are a little stronger than this. Light speed, global shield on use. You would think to yourself, V, I dash in, I get a bubble and I am protected for a long time. But keep in mind, light speed already has iframes on it. I can dash into a row of spikes and then dash back with no damage taken. F tier. Machete and pistol, this transforms the weapon into just the pistol. It's actually very strong and it counts as a melee weapon. So it works with open wounds and scheme. We're gonna put this in the double S tier. If you find this thing, you probably wanna build around it because you can have a really solid run. Magic bow, double the bullets, double the pogs. We have this in the S tier. It still has a long wind up. But my favorite way to play Legendary Magic Bow is to simply put it in the backpack. Magic Missile Super Pierce. This is Vegeta's Gallic Gun. You're able to pierce through all enemies, which is probably one of Magic Missile's issues, is it needs to hit other stuff. We're going to put this in the A tier. Still doesn't help you against bosses, but against biome monsters, a lot easier to clear the maps. Magnetic Grenade also has Echo, similar to Cluster Grenade. This is okay. Monsters that are stuck inside the middle of it are continued to be stuck there for even longer. Against monsters like Hand of the King, you can use it and then still get the grenades pulled in that he throws at you. Still, it is a Magnetic Grenade. We're going to put this in the C tier. I just don't think it's a good weapon overall. Maria's Cat from Castlevania is simply bigger. I'm already a big fan of Maria's cat in general. If you make it Mas Lartico, I think it's actually really cool. And you can use two of them. So this is in the S tier. These cats can solo the bosses <laughs> while you just dodge around. It's very, very fun. Marksman Bow, heavy stun. The whole idea here is that if the monster is too close to you, you get a stun on it. You can roll backwards and then maybe get the crit. Pretty situational. We're going to put this in the C tier. It's not awful, but I'm not planning to use Marksman Bow anyway. Maw of the Deep throws triple the sharks. This is very, very exciting. It's only in the A tier, however, because you do have to get to the throw portion in order to see the legendary activate. Meat Skewer does bonus damage behind the monster. Meat Skewer does exactly that, dashes you past them and attacks their back. We're going to put this in the A tier. Probably borderline S because Meat Skewer is a very good weapon. Medusa's Head from Castlevania. This gets additional knockback. For those who don't know, the Petrify status does bonus damage while the monster is being tossed around. This makes Medusa's Head basically self-reliant, though I do think it's probably hard to kill a boss with it. So we're going to put this in the B tier. Misericord, another new weapon. This thing does bonus critical damage, which should hopefully kill whatever you're fighting. The only issue with Misericord is if you don't crit, you get cursed. So I almost think it would have been better off to have bonus damage from behind. So we're going to put this in the C tier. Money Shooter got a little bit of a change. It now gives you $75 on every kill. Even though this is technically a nerf from getting a full refund, we're going to put this in the triple S because it's still extremely strong if you can kill more than one monster at a time. Even if you don't kill the monster, you only lost 50% of your money. If you see this thing, definitely use it for the rest of the run. Morning Star, another Castlevania weapon. This thing deflects projectiles. That includes missiles from Inquisitors, bombs from Pirate Captains, and rockets from Demolitioners. I'm still going to put this in the C tier. While it does help the thing do its job, it doesn't really do much for the monster itself. multi knock bow fires double the bullets. Back in the day, we paired this with Barb Tips. It was actually very strong at the time, but Barb Tips did get nerfed. 
I'm gonna bump this down to the B tier. It's not terrible. I think you have to run ammo mutation to make sure you don't run out of ammo, but still, I'd rather have something else. Mushroom Boy does Poison Cloud on hit. It's kind of interesting because if a monster is poisoned and dies, it might make its own Poison Cloud. However, we're only gonna put this in the C tier. It's just kind of extra icing on the cake. Nerves of Steel has bonus damage with critical hits. That's really all Nerves of Steel wants to do anyway, so we're gonna put this in the A tier. It's not a game-breaking effect, but it definitely helps Nerves of Steel do its job. Nutcracker has a new effect, Death Root. On kill, the monster does a root grenade effect. It actually looks really cool when it happens and helps to solve the issue of not having Stun Grenade or Root Grenade ready for a pack of monsters. Oil Grenade does Fire on Death by default. I think you can search this out by just re-rolling the skill over and over again, but it's nice to have this already. This kind of turns Oil Grenade into a powerful grenade. I'm going to put this in the A tier. I'm actually a big fan of this effect. It just doesn't really do anything on bosses. Oil Sword spreads oil. This one's weird because Oil Sword already puts oil on the ground on every attack. I'm going to put this in the C tier. Maybe you all have a good idea on how this thing works, but I don't think I do. Oven Axe now does the last hit of the combo and only the last hit of the combo. However, you are still using an Oven Axe, so you have to be careful. We're going to put this in the B tier. I know it's strong to only do the critical hit, but I just don't think I want to play Oven Axe in general. Panchaku, fire on hit. This allows you to do self-synergy with things like burning oil and oil on hit. I'm going to put this in the S tier. It's very, very good to stack up fire. Just roll this a couple times for the oil and you'll have a game-breaking build. Parry Shield does a stun on parry. However, it does not seem to stun when you parry a projectile. We're going to put this in the B tier. I'm sure that stun's going to help you at some point, but the whole idea of parry shield was to parry bullets. I don't know how that part was missed. Carol Glyphs. This thing gives you a blue shield whenever you do a critical hit. You can only do critical hits below 70% HP, I believe. So it's almost like a protection mechanic. It's actually pretty potent too, so we're going to put this in the A tier. Definitely give this a try, but remember, you are low on HP, so don't think you'll just get a free win. Phaser has Poison Cloud on hit. That means when you actually phase onto the monster, you automatically do the poison. It's actually kind of strong, and you can kill a monster with it. I don't believe rolling Phaser for bonus poison helps at all, but so long as you're keeping your stats up, I found that Phaser by itself will kill things. Oil Power does Death Worm. The worms are actually little chickens. It's actually kind of cute. I'm a big fan of the 11 herbs and spices if you've seen from my old videos. I'm going to put this in the A tier because it's actually very, very strong. However, I think most enemies will die to just the bombs anyway. Powerful Grenade gets a bigger radius on this explosion. It's actually extremely large and will probably hit your entire screen. Keep in mind, the explosion does not go through platforms if it's a solid platform. So we're only going to put this in the A tier. Punishment has a new effect. If the monster dies, the bubble of damage is repeated. I'm going to put this in the B tier, however, because it requires the monster to die. If it did the double on just any parry, it's probably S tier. Maybe too strong. The Pure Nail from Hollow Knight. When you kill an enemy, you get a worm for it. It's not really good. I'm going to assume that this is sort of theatrics. So we're going to put this in the D tier. Kind of a cool reference if it's supposed to be about bugs. But I don't know. It doesn't help me at all. Pyrotechnics absorbs fire on the ground on its final shot. The final shot then does a big explosion that puts more fire on the ground. This does work with other sources of fire. I don't know how strong it is because I've never done a full run of it. So I'm going to put this in the B tier for now. If you found this to be OP, definitely let me know in the comments. Queen's Rapier has a larger reality slash. It looks really, really cool and will hit multiple monsters at once. I'm going to put this in the B tier, however, because it doesn't really help for bosses. However, it's extremely cool when it does happen. Quick Bow has a brand new effect. If there's an arrow in the enemy, you get an arrow back, which technically gives this thing infinite ammo. This is in the A tier because I think Quick Bow is a rather weak weapon in general. 
Rampart now reflects the damage you take while the bubble is up. My best test on this was against the Scarecrow. Do one parry and then let Scarecrow rip itself apart. However, it seems to do no damage. We're going to put this in the D tier. So if this ever gets reworked, it will be something above D. Rapier gets run speed on crit. I'm going to assume it's so that you can get crit on one monster and then continue the crits on the next monster. But there's no way the crit duration is that long. I'm going to put this in the D tier because I don't think this actually works the way it's supposed to. Rebound Stone. Our next triple S tier legendary. Every bullet splits into another bullet and you can end up having tons of bullets on the screen at once. The only time this doesn't work is if there's no ceiling to the fight. Otherwise, this is a game breaking skill by itself. Repeater crossbow, the quiver portion pierces enemies. You need this. This is not optional. So this is in the A tier. Again, not game breaking. You need this in order to have a functional repeater crossbow in the first place. The normal shot, however, pierces all. This is in the B tier. I'm going to assume if I have all the monsters in front of me rooted, I don't need to do super pierce anyway. Once the first one dies, the next one's going to die anyway. Rhythm and Bozuki does fire on hit. It does work on the strum. It does stack. However, you don't get to stack fire very quickly, so we're going to have this one in the B tier. Root Grenade does Death Root. This is almost like Spell Echo. A monster that dies does another root around it. Very cool stuff. We're going to put this in the B tier because it doesn't really help us on the bosses. But at least in biomes, it's actually pretty potent. Say this Stiletto gets extra back damage. This almost makes it like a pseudo Assassin's Dagger. We're going to put this in the C tier. It's not game breaking. And if you pair this with Phaser and Open Wounds, you end up with insta kills on every single monster. Scarecrow Sickles, double the bullets, double the pogs. Double S tier weapon. This thing is supremely cool to use. Only reason why it's not in triple S is every once in a while I lose the other set of Sickles because I pick them up. But otherwise, take this thing every single time you see it. Scavenge Bombard. The bombs are shot out at double the speed as normal. I highly doubt you'll even notice it's faster. In fact, I had to pull out two Bombards just to measure it. I'm going to put this in the B tier. Tick Scythe. Another extremely unique legendary. This turns two Scythes into one button. We also know that it works with Kill Rhythm. So good job to Battle Dev that was able to make this one work. However, it has a big issue where you always do the vertical attack first. That means you can't carry the combo for longer and get more crits out of it. Technically, that makes it a much worse weapon than using regular Scarecrow Sickles. However, there is a big gameplay component here that's helped out. I think I'm going to just put this in a question mark right now. Personally, I think it's worse, but I know for a lot of players, it's probably better, and I don't know how to average that out. So let me know in the comments if you think this is better than normal, or if you'd rather be able to control which attacks you use. Seismic Strike does Death Root. Just like Root Grenade, when a monster dies, it does a secondary root around it. However, this is going in the C tier because I don't know if this necessarily helps Seismic Strike do its job. And maybe if they come up with a different kind of effect that lets me do these really long windups, it'll be a little bit better as a legendary. Serenade has infinite duration in pet form. This is triple S tier. If I ever see Serenade as a legendary, I dig out a regular Serenade from shops and I run that for the rest of the game. It's not even the melee attack that does the most damage. I think the pet itself does more than you. So all you're doing is applying marks with your normal attack while the pet kills everything. Sewing Scissors, this one comes from the Clean Cut update. It gives you triple the amount of kill bonus every time you kill an enemy. However, it only works towards the kill count, not towards cool things like Berserker or Necromancy. So we're going to have this in the D tier. If Battle Dev can figure out how to make it triple your mutations, then this is going to be bumped straight up to S. Shovel increases the quality of all the secrets you find. A normal croissant turns into a baguette. 
and a normal green gem turns into a purple gem. The only issue with this is it doesn't work in the backpack, and I have confirmed that to be the case. Could be a bug, but that means is you have to take the shovel out of your backpack in order to actually break the secret open. This is going to be our second question mark. Every time I forget to use it, it's actually a waste of space. Shrapnel Axe. Every bullet has a fire trail on it. You would think this would be really cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on the melee attack. If it did both fire on melee and bullet, it would be a higher tier, but right now it's only in the C. Sinu Slicer does bleed propagation. What that means is that if a monster dies with bleed, others are bled around it. Very good for enemies on higher platforms and bats that the Sinu Slicer can't reach. We're going to put this in the B tier. Doesn't help out with bosses, but it certainly helps out with biomes. Smoke Bomb has a really cool effect. While you kill an enemy with Smoke Bomb's effect, the effect is reset and you can do it again. Sometimes this doesn't work for me, and I think it has something to do with shooting arrows or bombs on attack, so I'm going to put this in the A tier, only because it's a little inconsistent for me. Snake Fangs get double the stacks. We're going to do S for Snake Fangs. This is actually a really cool effect. Helps you get the crits out more easily. Synergizes with Catalyst from Diverse Deck. Very, very strong to get double poison from a fast weapon like this. Compare that to Sonic Carbine, which has Poison Cloud on hit and is only in the C tier. Reason why is that Poison Cloud doesn't stack. You'll only get one poison out of probably five bullets. So that's really not good. Spike Shield gets bonus damage on critical hits. That's all you want to do with Spike Shield anyway, and it makes it strong enough to kill almost as many monsters as Greed Shield Legendary. We're going to put this in the S tier. If you're a parry god, definitely make sure you use this thing. Spite Sword does this massive poison cloud on hit. You can combine this with Face Flask and extra poison damage on the Spite Sword to get some really cool synergy. We're going to put this in the C tier only because it does require a couple things to line up. Star Fury, double the bullets, double the pogs. This is double S, strong enough to kill any monster if you take point blank. I also like to combine this with networking, even if I'm playing Brutality. Very, very strong skill. Very, very strong mutations that go behind it. Definitely give this one a try. Stun Grenade stuns the monsters for longer. That's literally what Stun Grenade wants to do. You can, however, find this on a normal Stun Grenade. So we're going to put this in the A tier. It's very, very noticeable. So this will actually save your runs when you get it. Swarm Grenade. Poison on hit. Yes, every single bite of a worm does apply poison. It does stack up very quickly. However, these things have no HP still. So we're going to put this in the C tier. Until they're tankier, I don't think it ever be higher than C. Swift Sword gives you run speed on kill. That means the first monster in every biome automatically gives you critical hits. Very, very strong. Does not help you on bosses. So we're going to put this one in the A tier. However, it does solve the issue of needing to speed run throughout the biome. Symmetrical Lance. This is the actual version that comes from your first hand in the king fight. Quadruple damage for free. No drawbacks. Gotta be in the triple S. It has a bonus effect of ignoring shields. Don't even worry about that. The most important part is you're doing a crap ton of damage for absolutely free. Taunt has a massive AoE to its taunt now. For those who don't know, and I doubt you know it because you never use Taunt, it only works in front of you. However, while recording this, I killed myself multiple times just trying to get footage of Taunt's AoE. So I'm going to put this in the D tier because it's too funny to have it in the F tier. Telluric Shock gives you a global shield on kill. Keep in mind that Telluric Shock already has iframes to it. So you're only getting maybe like 0.3 seconds of additional iframes after it's done. If it lasted any longer than that, it would be higher than a D rank. 
but as of right now, that's the best I can do. Tentacle gives you poison on hit. I think the only reason for this is to live out the Saitama dream of having bonus damage to poison target and finally killing monsters with just one punch. However, you need to really dig deep for that to happen, so I'm gonna put this in the C tier. Tesla Coil gives double the charges. This one is better than Lightning Rod because Tesla Coils exist for longer. We're gonna put this in the S tier. I did test it, their damage does stack, however the monster can only be shocked from one source. But having two Tesla Coils is definitely better than one. Speaking of better than one, Boyax gives you extra ammo. This is by far the best way to run a Boyax is simply more Boyax. Double S tier. It does work with ammo mutation if you're on the latest patch of dead cells. This turns Boyax from a support weapon into a main weapon, strong enough to kill any boss in the game. The throwable objects, aka the yeetables. This thing is in the A tier. If it kills a monster, you get three ammo back. Doesn't help on bosses. It does allow you to kill monsters in the biome, so it's pretty fun to use in there. Another thrown weapon, the throwing axe. This throws two axes instead of just one. Makes it infinitely easier to land the axes on an enemy. However, if the enemy is directly next to you, you still have the issue of missing it entirely. This is in the B tier. If it somehow had its own effect, on monsters that are right next to you, it would be a higher rank, but at least this helps with your aiming issues. Throwing Knife gets Bleed Propagation. Doesn't really help the Throwing Knife do its job, but it's kind of nice to kill a bat and then have instant bleed on all the enemies around you. We're going to have this in the B tier. Cool to have, but doesn't really do anything for bosses. Thunder Shield, Poison on Parry. Back in the day, Thunder Shield used to do Poison on Hit. So every hit of the lightning did a poison dot. They nerfed that, so now we have a worse version. So we're gonna put this one in the D tier. Tombstone. If you see my videos, you have seen Tombstone's legendary in action. The monsters that are killed by the curse will now curse enemies around it. And it continues all the way until there's no monsters to find. This is in the triple S tier. Of course, this doesn't help you in a boss fight. But the amount of pressure this applies to a biome is way too high to not actually run it. Tonic has an extended duration. This, when you're running survival, especially if you're not very interested in slow weapons, is extremely helpful if you have cooldown reduction. I would say give this a try, pair it with something like Oven Axe, maybe even Wrecking Ball. You might actually have a fun run with some quote unquote bad items. The normal version of Toothpick has stun on hit, but weirdly enough, Toothpick already does that, even on bosses. So we're gonna put this one in the F tier. I'm going to assume that Battle Dev may have missed this one. Once the Toothpick is broken, on kill, it will instantly rebuild itself into the normal version. We're gonna put this in the C tier. It's cool, don't get me wrong. Of course, it doesn't do anything on bosses, which is probably the monster that you got the big bonk on anyway. Torch now applies double stacks. I have this one in the B tier because while it's pretty cool to have double stacks from Torch, I think other items such as the Molotov that do double stacks are actually better than this because it can do it at max range. Tornado gets double speed. I can now throw out the tornado and chances are it will hit every monster on the platform. If you have a small platform, it absolutely rips through them. However, it's still a tornado by default and doesn't have a ton of utility. We're gonna put this in the C tier because I could probably use a regular skill over tornado. Twin dagger, run speed on crit, I don't know if I need that at all, but at least helps out the speed run, perhaps. We're going to have this one in the D tier. If you're a speed runner, it's great. If you're not, it probably doesn't do anything for you. Valmont's Whip, extra damage for critical hits. That is literally what Valmont Whip wants to do, so we're going to have this in the A tier. We don't have help to do its job, but at least we have help with the damage. Vampire Killer from the Castlevania DLC. This has a very unique skill. It is Root on Hit. Vampire Killer is already slow by itself, and you're basically turning it into a Seismic Strike, which is kind of strong. We're going to have this one in the S tier. Give this one a try. I think you'll like it. If you were to ask me, V, will Vampirism ever get out of the F tier? The Legendary version certainly does. S tier. When you kill an enemy, the effect is extended. 
I've seen this last throughout an entire biome before. It's actually very strong and keeps you alive, even with the worst builds possible. Vorpan has fire on hit. Basically everything that Panchaku has except the attack speed. So we're going to put this one in the A tier. War Javelin, Fire Trail. War Javelin always pierces through enemies, so I think it will always catch on fire, which is actually extremely good. We're going to have this one in the A tier. It's almost like a miniature Molotov, except it also has a bonus stun effect to it. War Spear, however, has run speed on crit. Why it has it on the crit, I have no idea. Probably better off if it was simply run speed on kill? I'm going to question Battle Dev about that one and have it in the F tier for now. Wave of Denial. Bonus knockback on effect. It actually knocks the monsters back very, very far. However, I've had instances where the monsters live because they were knocked onto a new platform. I'm going to have this one in the A tier for now. It's strong. Just remember that sometimes the monster won't die because you probably saved it. Whip Sword from Castlevania DLC. The Whip Sword itself has an extended crit duration. However, it only lasts for maybe one extra attack. Not very potent at all. We're gonna give this one a D tier. And then the transformation effect applies critical hits do bleeding. And I'm doing air quotes that you can't see because I don't think it's actually good at all. It probably could have just been bleed on hit. So this one's also gonna be in the D tier. Wings of the Crow, global shield on use. I could not for the life of me get the global shield to actually save me. So we're going to put this one in the F tier. I would rather have just had 100% duration. I don't know why that wasn't the choice here. Wolf Trap, ice on stop. What this does is when the wolf trap is over, the monster is frozen. This gives you some time to throw down another wolf trap. However, I'm going to put this in the C tier because I think with Heart of Ice, I'm gonna get that much cooldown anyway to just throw out a second set of wolf traps. If you ask me, V, would Wrecking Ball ever get out of the F tier? Absolutely, if you get the legendary version. The attack speed is increased. It's increased so much that you can recall the Wrecking Ball mid-air and hit monsters directly in front of you. Very, very cool. I don't know if it's game-breaking, so I'm gonna have this in the A tier, but still very fun to actually play it. And then finally, to wrap up, 180 plus legendary effects. We have Wrenching Whip, another brand new effect. This throws out Crow's Feet on its initial attack. We're going to put this in the B tier. While cool, and kind of synergizes with the pull-in effect to make sure you don't get hit, it only ever does it on the first attack. I think if it did it on every attack, it might be kind of OP and removes the need for melee mutation. So this is kind of like B for balanced. And there you go. Tons and tons of legendary effects, some of which you have never seen before. If you liked what you saw, leave a like on the video. And if you want to see some of these in action, here's two runs that you can look at with legendary weapons in use. Very, very fun stuff. Either way, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more Dead Cells and other action roguelikes. And I'll catch you on the next video.